Hey folks, Jordan Charidan, uh live from New York. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. Uh, it is October 4th uh, and a lot of news going on. So press the share button, get it out to as many people as possible. I am live on the YouTube. I am live on the Periscope. I am about to be live on the Facebook. Um, and it is again a total, total mess in Washington, D.C., as the Republican Party uh, shows you once and for all that it is the party of elite, uh, out of touch, uh, misogynistic, uh, corrupt uh, white men. Uh, obviously, the Democrats have a lot of that, too. But right now, uh, you could only point fingers at the Republican Party. Uh, definitely, definitely share this share this live stream. Get it out to more people. Uh, let me just put the link in the description that I want to put in uh, to remind you this is a super chat. So if you're feeling super, uh, feel free to contribute in the super chat. And we are uh, definitely, definitely, definitely pushing our GoFundMe campaign for uh, on the ground reporting. So uh, without further ado, uh, it started leaking this morning. Uh, it started leaking this morning that the Republican Party uh, was saying there was no corroboration found in the FBI's, quote, investigation, uh, if you want to call it an investigation, um, into the accusations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, obviously, we had Christine Ford's testimony last week, and we have Deborah Ramirez, uh, another woman who has accused Kavanaugh, uh, uh, in her case, of... Uh, basically thrusting his genitals on her without consent. Um, and the FBI uh, finished their investigation uh, in five days. And uh, essentially, if you are an objective common sense person taking off your Democrat hat or Republican hat or progressive hat or conservative hat, uh, I would say they probably interviewed maybe 30 to 40 percent of the people that could have shed some light on whether there was truthful and facts and credence to uh, Christine Ford's allegation, as well as Deborah Ramirez. There was also uh, Julie Swetnick, who accused them not of assaulting her, but of standing on a line um, outside a room where a woman uh, was being gang raped. Thank you, Andrea, starting the day on the Super Chat. 499, thanks for your reporting. We need it now more than ever. Thank you for watching, and uh, very, very soon, uh, I'll tell you guys a little later what I'm thinking, uh, Ty and I will be back in the field. So, let me read to you uh, just, I mean, there's literally several, several pieces talking about what a ridiculous sham this investigation is. I wouldn't even call it an investigation. Uh, I don't know if it's the FBI or the Trump administration that is basically uh, putting the putting the uh, kibosh on them interviewing key witnesses. But uh, this is from NBC. The FBI has not contacted dozens of potential sources in the Kavanaugh investigation. With the investigation winding down, multiple individuals who have tried to contact the Bureau have not heard back. More than 40 people, 40 people, with potential information into the sexual misconduct allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh have not been contacted by the FBI, according to multiple sources that include friends of both the nominee and his accusers. The Bureau is expected to wrap up its expanded background investigation as early as Wednesday, so obviously that has passed, into two allegations against Kavanaugh, one from Christine Ford and the other from Deborah Ramirez. But sources close to the investigation, as well as a number of people who know those involved, say the FBI, FBI has not contacted dozens of potential corroborators or key witnesses. Moving over to The New Yorker, uh, who obviously has, Ronan Farrow has broken a lot of uh, news in the Trump Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, have been resorting to sending statements unsolicited to the Bureau and to senators in hopes that they would be seen before the inquiry colluded, uh, colluded, concluded. On Monday, President Trump said that the Bureau should be able to interview anybody they want within reason. But the extent of the constraints placed on the investigation, investigating agents by the White House remained unclear. Late Wednesday night, Senate Majority Leader Turkey Neck, uh, I mean Mitch McConnell, announced that the FBI probe was over and cleared the way for an important procedural vote on uh, Kavanaugh's nomination to take place on Friday. NBC News reported that dozens of people who said they had information about Kavanaugh had contacted FBI field offices, but agents had not been permitted to talk to many of them. 
Deborah Ramirez, one of the two women who have accused Kavanaugh of sexual abuse, said in an interview that she had been hopeful that her story would be investigated when two agents drove from Denver to Boulder, Colorado last weekend to interview her at her lawyer's office. But Ramirez said that she was troubled by what she perceived as a lack of willingness on the part of the Bureau to take steps to substantiate her claims. Quote, I am very alarmed, first, that I was denied an FBI investigation for five days, and then, when one was granted, that it was given on a short timeline and that the people who were key to corroborating my story have not been contacted, Ramirez said. I feel like I'm being silenced. Her classmate, uh, a classmate of Kavanaugh's at Yale, she said that he exposed herself to her during a drunken dormant dormitory party and thrust his penis in her face, which led to her touching it against her will. Kavanaugh has denied the allegation, along with that of Christine Blasey Ford. Several former Yale students who claim to have information regarding the alleged incident with Ramirez or about Kavanaugh's behavior at Yale said that they had not been contacted by the FBI. Kenneth G. Appold uh, was Kenneth G. Appold was a sweet mate of Kavanaugh at the time of the alleged incident. He had previously spoken to the New Yorker about Ramirez on condition of anonymity but he has said that he is now willing to be identified because he believes that the FBI must thoroughly investigate her allegation. Appholt, who is the James Hastings Nichols Professor of Ref- Reformation History at Princeton Theological Seminary, try saying that two, two times, said that he first heard about the alleged incident involving Kavanaugh and Ramirez either the night it occurred or a day or two later. Appholt said, said that he was 100% certain that he was told that Kavanaugh was the male student who exposed himself to Ramirez. He said that he never discussed the allegation with Ramirez, whom he said he barely knew in college, but he recalled details which he said an eyewitness described to him at the time that matched Ramirez's memory of what happened. I can corroborate Debbie's account, he said in an interview. I believe her because it matches the same story. I heard 35 years ago, although the two of us have never talked, um, Blah, blah, blah. Appled won the two Fulbright Fellowships and earned his PhD in religious studies at Yale. Uh, Also recalled telling his graduate school roommate about the incident in 1989 or 1990. That roommate, Michael Whetstone, who is now an architect, confirmed Appled's account and said, It stood out in our minds because it was a shocking story of transgression. Appled said that he initially asked to remain anonymous because he hoped to make contact first with the classmate who, to the best of his recollection, told him about the party and was an eyewitness to the incident. He said that he had not been able to get any response from that person, despite multiple attempts to do so. The New Yorker reached the classmate, but he said that he had no memory of the incident. And uh, one more story that I think sheds light on the constraints that were put on. The FBI background check of Supreme Court Brett Kavanaugh, uh, nominee Brett Kavanaugh, appeared to remain curtailed in its scope, opening up the possibility that the Bureau would again face criticism for what some will view as a lackluster investigation. Although complete details of the findings have yet to be released, the inquiry seems to have focused mostly on an allegation by Christine Blasey Ford. Uh, The Washington Post has been able to confirm interviews with six witnesses, five of whom have a connection to Ford or her allegations. Uh, In an interview on CNN, uh, White House spokesperson Raj Shah said the FBI had contacted 10 people The investigation was always unlikely to prove whether Kavanaugh is guilty of sexual misconduct. That's not true. But the inquiry's limited scope, which was dictated by the White House, along with a Friday deadline, is likely to exacerbate the partisan tension. So, I mean, where do you even start? Where do you even start? First of all, the original, and and share this video on Facebook, uh, share it on YouTube, uh, share on Periscope. Uh, And thanks to everybody watching. Thanks for Will, the $1.99 in the chat. Thanks for good reporting, he said. Thanks for watching. So it is really astounding because, first of all, the FBI was given one week. Last time I checked, one week is seven days. Correct me if I am wrong. Is one week seven days? I believe that's the case. So they finished it in five days. Well, if you're given seven days, why would you not exhaust every single possible lead. Why is it that they're saying, multiple outlets are saying, dozens of witnesses were not contacted? Obviously, if you only have seven days, you might not be able to interview every single person based on logistics, travel, geography, the whole nine. But why is it if you were given seven days, you wrapped it up in five? That's number one. Number two, you literally have possible witnesses for Deborah Ramirez 
sending in their statements unsolicited. They're not, they haven't been interviewed. So one would assume even if their statements that they're sending in, even if their accounts of either confirming what she's saying or not are sent in, they're not being included in the findings. That's number two. So number one, the FBI did not even use the time allotted, the full time. Number two, you have dozens of people who potentially could corroborate one or both of the allegations, not even being contacted. And number three, let, let's cut the bullshit. Okay, the White House, uh, Trump saying, oh, they could, they could do whatever they want. No, 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 no. Literally, you have the people in charge of what the FBI can actually investigate. Trump has been going out into America at his ridiculous re-election rallies, starts these rallies, Three, four years before he's even up for re-election. Uh, he's been going around the country slamming Christine Ford, mocking her the other night, slamming the, the, the sliming and the smearing of Brett Kavanaugh and basically saying nothing to see here. So these are the people, this is the individual that are dictating what the FBI can and cannot do. Do you see any slight conflict of interest there? I mean, obviously, Trump doesn't follow rules. He doesn't follow procedure. He doesn't care. He said he could shoot one of his shoot someone in on Fifth Avenue. His supporters wouldn't give a damn, and he's right. He's right. But it's kind of astounding. It's kind of astounding that number one, the people that are reading the report, the Republicans, including Jeff Flake, Susan Collins has said it looks like it was comprehensive and thorough. Well, how can you say that if there's dozens of people? that are saying we have information that corroborate one or both of the accusers, but they have not been contacted. Now, if the FBI actually took the full seven days, which they did not, if they actually took the full seven days, that's one thing. They could say, hey, we only had seven days. We only have so many agents. We couldn't reach all these people. They were, you know, whatever the reasons. Then we're having a different discussion. They didn't take the seven days. You would have to think since FBI director um, Chris Ray, because that his name, Chris Ray, has been leading the investigation and taking, taking, by all accounts, scrupulous notes of what the Trump administration has been communicating to them. You would have to think that if it was thorough, it would have gone the full seven days and we would know how many people were on it. How many people did they try to contact? You're telling me that for two accounts, one in high school, one in college, you reached out to 10 people, 10 people, when I'm assuming between two parties where these allegations are made, there was way more, way more than two people. Hey, Jen. Jen? Ah, never mind. Way more than two people. So it's, you know, I hate to use like what the Democrats are saying, because I think the Democratic Party is corrupt, and I'll get to that in a minute. But it is a sham. It is a sham. It's not a real investigation. And, you know, Republicans are trying to put out there now, like, well, of course they were going to, they would never be happy. Well, I mean, if, 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 you, if you're legitimately looking for the truth, with the, which the Republicans are definitely not, this, this investigation from the beginning was only because Jeff Flake put a gun to their head, you would interview dozens and dozens of people. And you would do it through seven days. And we would know at least what Mark Judge had to say. So I don't know how you can call this anything other than a cover-up, not a thorough investigation.